How's it going, everyone? So uh, we're back to some basic tests. I did remove one turn from either side. I did have a really interesting thought in that process, and uh, I tried it, and it's interesting, and I'm not going to mention it. All right, I will. What if you vary the difference in the windings here, and what if you did it harmonically? Huh? How about that between this? Uh, I took one off and left the other on and did a test, and uh, I obviously increased the negative side of the transformer, the low side where I start the winding of the secondary. Uh, I increased the potential on that side and didn't increase the potential on this side. Now, doesn't that make an interesting situation, especially when it's harmonically? Well, that's another device down the road. All right. So, we got a basic Don Smith, most basic here. Let's get a real good handle on this to start with. First off, we have a potential between these two, and we have a potential between here and here and here and here. So here, here, and here are potentials. Dawn makes this earth ground. So that means there's a negative potential below earth ground. And that means there's a positive potential above earth ground. So in this situation with both diodes forward facing, when he adjoins the two, first thing that happens is first they get rectified. We take half the high peak here and the low peak here. So the high peak flows through the diode because it's high. The low peak gets rectified and now becomes high. So it's, they're filling in. So you get twice the frequency, right? DC, bloop, 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 right? Like a bouncing ball. Okay, so we understand that. When we uh, go here, so say I have 5,000 volts here. We go here, we got 2,500 volts. We got 2,500 volts to earth ground, to, uh, yeah, earth ground. So uh, when I take these two like this and join them, so I take the hot from both, I end up with half the potential, right? 2,500 volts. But because I've taken two of them, I have twice the amperage. That means at 2,500 volts, I can fill the capacitor twice as fast as using one of those. That's just, you know, common. All right, let's turn this on. We have, uh, like I said, this hooked up here. Uh, by removing one turn, I went from 2,000 volts to about 2,500 volts-ish. Not quite, but close. So 20, 22, 23. Now, that is twice the amperage now at that voltage. Now, if I take another turn off, if I'm going to go this route, which is how my devices are, except that I'm bringing back that invisible negative you don't see, and we're playing with that as well. Uh, Dons are either both forward-facing uh, positive or bo both forward-facing negative. He does them in both directions, both polarities, but nobody's put all four together. I don't even think Tesla has. Anyways, that's what I'm working on. So uh, we'll turn that off. We, we've got 20-some volts there. Oh, let's turn it back on again. I didn't get the frequency, dang it. And that's what I wanted to show you here. What do we got for frequency? 14 kilohertz. Shitty is all shit up. There's no earth ground on this, right? We're just taking some basic voltage measurements. Okay, now, nothing's changed. I'm just going to add this spark gap across there. Now... It's across there, right? So now it's uh, being rectified DC and jumping the gap and going back to midpoint. I mean, that's all that's going on there, right? Now what happens to the frequency? You can see that uh, it comes alive. You can see we've got, uh, what I don't know, 40, 60 watts, something like that going through it. What is the frequency from the spark gap? Hmm. All right, well, that's the frequency. And what's the voltage? Oh, oh, we have almost no output. Now, I am going between the mid-ground, or the midpoint. I'm going right on either side of that spark gap. We have no voltage, even though it's DC. What's going on? So if I put two diodes off of that, will I get voltage? Let's find out. 